Hello folks, my name is Rick Pearson and this is Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. Today we continue our first speaking engagement from Bradenton, Florida, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. Before we begin our program, we'd like to invite you to join Karen and myself every Thursday at 7 p.m. EST time for our Bible study podcast live chat. You can go to www.prophecyusa.org, our YouTube channel, or just send us your email and we can send you a link every week to remind you. You know, last week we shared part one of our very first speaking engagement in the USA at Flame the Fire Conference in Bradenton, Florida. And my host, Pastor Phil Durstein, told me that he wanted me to take as much time as needed and give our full teaching on America's role in Bible prophecy. As I said last week, that message lasted for two full hours of non-stop teaching. And at the end of the meeting, almost 50% of the audience bought a book or a study guide and many came up and thanked me for being so detailed in delivering such a sobering revelation of where we are on God's prophetic time clock. Today, we're going to go and continue with part one of that seminar. So if you've never been to Florida, I'd like to once again welcome you to Bradenton Christian Retreat's Family Church for Prophecy USA's first teaching seminar in this great country that we call the United States of America, and you are there. In chapter 17, 18, and 19 is John's last vision. John's last vision, a woman appears. When does she appear? Who is she? Where is she? And why is she? Who is this woman? That has been the greatest controversy for the last 2,000 years in Bible prophecy. But there are four time sequences hidden in scripture that will challenge every traditional teaching proposing that the woman rides the beast through the tribulation. Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, your traditions have made the word of God of none effect. Harper's Bible Dictionary says that word effect is kairos. It means an appointed time in the purposes of God. None effect means you're missing the appointed time in the purposes of God. Think about that. In Jesus' day, the most studied Bible scholars of the day who studied the book didn't even recognize the author. But the common fishermen, tax collectors, housewives, and even the children were given revelation knowledge of who he was. He's the one. They could see it. Think about that. Habakkuk 2.3 says, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it, for the vision waits for an appointed time. That word run denotes the struggle of a person of faith who has to stay the course against evil and remain committed to God. We will run the race and finish the course. But first, we have to unveil specific time sequences or secrets that have been hidden in Scripture for the last 2,000 years. And we will see who, when, where, and why this woman exists. The first time sequence we're going to look at is found right at the end of the tribulation. In Revelation 16, 17, it says, It is done. What's done? The tribulation is done. There's a global earthquake that takes place like none since the beginning of man, shakes the world. The city of Jerusalem is divided into three parts and the second coming of Jesus Christ takes place. But in Revelation 16, 19, after it says it is done, it says, and God 
remembered Babylon the Great to make her drain the cup of the fury of his wrath. Now that word God remembered Babylon the Great is the word mimneskami. It means to recall from memory, or in other words, it's a past tense event. The wrath coming out of Babylon's cup upon the rest of the world is the last drop of his wrath. So if that's the last drop of his wrath, where does the first drop of his wrath come from? How many here are following? You following along with me? So now we're going to look for the second time sequence that pinpoints where this woman is. Revelation 17, 1, it says, And one of the angels, not the seventh angel that had the seventh vial, but one of the seven angels who had the seven vials and already poured it out, came unto John and said, Come and I will show you the judgment of this great woman, this great prostitute. Why is he taking John somewhere else to see the judgment of the mystery woman if it just happened several seconds ago? He's taking John out of that time sequence from behind the tribulation. Revelation 17, 3, he carried John away into the wilderness into another time sequence. And that is the second time sequence. Now we go to the third time sequence. From Revelation 17, 1 through 9, they describe this woman. Now remember, we're not at the end of the tribulation. He says, come with me, I'm going to show you something. And from Revelation 17, 1 through 9, he describes this woman. She's rich, opulent, a world leader. And then in verse 10, the angel gives us a time sequence where John is in the Bible. L let me explain that. Revelation 17, 7 says, And the angel came unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. And he's going to unravel the mystery of where this woman sits in Bible prophecy. No generation has ever had this teaching before. The third time sequence is found in Revelation 17.10, and it says, Here is the mind that hath wisdom. There are seven kings, five have fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come, and the beast is the eighth. What? Now, when, when you read that, there are seven kings, five have fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come, but the beast is the eighth and is of the seven. Now, a picture says a thousand words. Watch this. He comes to John and he says, five kingdoms have fallen. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medio Persia, and Greece had already fallen. John is living in Rome. He says, one is. That is Rome. So now we have six kingdoms, but the beast is the eighth. If the beast is the eighth, who is the seventh? Is it possible it's the woman who's riding on the beast before the tribulation begins? Are you following me? So number one, Revelation 16, 19, the end of the, the tribulation, it says it is done. Number two, the angel says, come with me, John, and he's taken away out of that time sequence. And number three, there are eight providential nations in history, and the beast is the eighth. We have one time sequence left that will solidify all these others. 17, 1 through 11, the beast is described, but in Revelation 17, 12 says, And the ten horns which you saw, star ten kings, these are the horns that form the new world order, which have received no kingdom as yet but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. The beast is not in power when the woman appears. The tribulation hasn't started yet, and he's trying to rise up, but she's sitting on him. And it's going to take one hour for the beast to take over. In one hour, it will take one hour for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. 4,000 years ago, an antichrist religion was birthed in ancient Babylon. Yet Joshua overcame it, Gideon overturned it, Elijah overwhelmed it, and Josiah overthrew it. This vile religion demands a rejection of God's commandments, a defiance of God's morals, a resurgence of Ashtoreth poles with rampant immorality, and the shedding of innocent blood that cries out for judgment. 
These are the signs of a nation seduced by Baal worship. But what is the answer? 2,000 years ago, innocent blood was shed for you. But will America come back? Will she seek God's forgiveness or will she suffer His judgment? Prophecy USA proudly presents a study guide addressing America's spiritual state of the union concerning her past, present, and future role in Bible prophecy. Call right now with your donation of $20 or more to receive your copy, 1-888-306-1759, or go online to prophecyusa.org right now. So now here we have John's final vision. It's now confirmed. We're seeing a picture of the beast before he comes into power. The seven heads of the beast are seven mountains or continents coming up from the waters, but it's all, they're also seven kingdoms. The ten horns that you see are ten divisions or ten regions that have not yet come together to rule the world. All of those animals have come and gone, but they're going to all join together and form a ten nation or a ten regional area around the earth. And they will be formed from the seven kingdoms who've been raised up through history. So Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, representing the ethnic diversification of peoples, nations, multitudes, and tongues. Because that's exactly what the water represents. She rises up from the sea of humanity. So who is the woman sitting on this seven-headed beast? It says the woman sits on the beast. That word sit is kathamia, and that means to rule over or please over. It's the same word used when Jesus sits on the throne and rules and reigns. This woman is ruling over the beast before he comes into power. In other words, she's holding him back from coming into power. And here is the mind that has wisdom in Revelation 17, 9. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now, on page 45 of our book, we explain that this word used, seven mountains, is the word oros. It's used in Luke 3, 5, and 23, 30, and it differentiates mountains and hills. Hills is buonos. She is sitting on oros, mountains. The woman does not sit on seven hills. She sits on seven mountains. And Harper's Dictionary says Oros is a high landmass projecting above the surrounding areas. The mountains come out of the waters, which represent peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. In Revelation 18, 18, it describes the woman, and it says, What city is like unto this great city, this woman? They use the word polis in Greek where we get the word politicians and politics from. Harper's Bible Dictionary describes city as a population center denoted in Scripture as having walls around her to protect her citizens. This is what a city was back then. But cities today do not have walls. But we do have population centers with air defense identification zones protecting the large population centers of people within them. And they're called countries in our modern vernacular. This woman is not sitting on a little city of seven hills. She's sitting on the seven continents of the earth, policing over peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. She's not a city as we know it. She is a country with global power policing over the beast before he comes into power. In the modern vernacular, this is how we should read Revelation 18, 17. So what country is like unto this great country, this woman? We have to look for a country that matches what that woman looks like. Number one... According to Jeremiah, she's been created by divine proclamation as prophesied by the major prophets in Scripture, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and John. Jeremiah 51 says that she is a golden cup in the hand of the Lord. 
Providential means created from divine inspiration or divine proclamation. She was talked about way back before she was ever created, just like the other providential nations that Daniel saw and Nebuchadnezzar saw. Now, there's 53 descriptions of this woman of this country, and we're going to go through and we're going to see what happens in this country. Number one, she has to be a providential nation. She has to be because she's already spoken of. The Bible says that she's a mystery. Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Remember, Daniel said the words are closed until the time of the end. None of the wicked will understand this, but the wise will understand. Those who hear my sheep hear my voice. If we're in the last days, like everyone says we are, should we not know who the seventh nation is? And how did God reveal it in the past? He used Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, John. He used angels, audible voices, and they were all touched by that angel or equipped to deliver a sure word of prophecy. For 2,000 years, prophecy teachers have speculated who this woman is. Some say that she's the Catholic Church. Some say that she sits in, this, uh, in a, a city of seven hills in Rome. I was listening to a, a prophecy teacher in Madison Square Gardens. It was packed, and I like this guy. He said, Babylon, this city is going to be built by the Antichrist during the tribulation period, and she will be full of every kind of sin you can imagine. Really? Where do you find that in Scripture? It doesn't say that the Antichrist builds Babylon. It doesn't say that at all. In fact, we're going to find out the first thing Antichrist does when he comes into power, he destroys Babylon. He takes the woman off his back. We will show that quickly here. Now, she symbolized globally as a woman. So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon the scarlet beast. Isaiah 47, 5 says, Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. All of the other providential nations are recognized as animals. But this providential nation is recognized as a woman. The world recognizes America by her global icon, Lady Liberty. And in building her and the seven spikes protruding out of her head represent her illumination of liberty to the seven continents or seven mountains of the earth. Now here's where we shift gears from traditional prophecy. She was originally designed to be put in the Suez Canal representing the goddess Ishtar, but that didn't work out. So they brought her over here and made her Lady Liberty. This nation, this country that we're looking for, is the wealthiest of all nations. And the woman was arrayed in purple, scarlet, and colored, decked in gold, precious stones, having a cup in her hand full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. We have to look for the richest nation in the world before the Antichrist and his ten-horned final new world order come into power. We have to look for a rich nation that's represented like a woman, the world's uh, GDP is $50 trillion, and the USA GDP is 21 trillion. The world population is 7.8 billion people. 350 million people in America represent 40% of the world's gross domestic product. The population of America, 5% of the world's population, consumes 40% of the product, gross national product, gross domestic product. We are the richest nation in the history of mankind, the United States of America. And the Bible says in Revelation 18, 12, 13, that she sells over 27 products. Now, every product you see on that screen is either built, grown, shipped in or shipped out or traded on the world's largest stock market in New York City. Every product that you see there. Meanwhile, the Statue of Liberty 
representing the Lady of Kingdoms, watches over the shipmasters literally passing by Babylon, New York. How many of these products does Rome trade? Or a city that's going to be built somewhere in the Mideast? This verse is already being fulfilled right now in real time. We are already at the Kairos moment. The vision is not waiting for its appointed time. The appointed time is already being fulfilled right now under our noses. The United Nations has a 2030 agenda. The COVID-19 pandemic has an accelerated mandate. But as the New World Order plans their world without God, nothing will be accelerated faster than the prophetic word God has spoken to the United States of America. It will be the hour that changes everything. Prophecy USA is proud to present their latest book, The Hour That Changes Everything. Together with the study guide, you can prepare yourself for one of the greatest events in Bible prophecy. Order today on Amazon or prophecyusa.org. So where are the prophets who are telling us this? She's traded in slavery, according to Revelation 18, 13. 700,000, both black and whites, stopped slavery in this nation because President Abraham Lincoln decided they would not have this evil practice done in this city on a hill. In 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. But there was a book written during that time. It's called Behind the Scenes in the Lincoln White House. We find Lincoln was empowered as he studied and pondered the Bible, which played a critical role in the life, especially during the catastrophic Civil War. He was a ruler of a mighty nation going to the pages of the Bible with simple Christian earnestness, comfort and courage, and finding both in the darkest hour of a nation's calamity. Ponder it, O ye scoffers of God's holy word, and then hang your heads in shame. Christianity ended slavery. Not the secular humanist agenda of Stalin, Mao, Hitler, and President Xi Jinping, and Marxism in America is fighting these truths. That's why they should call themselves critical rage theorists, not critical race theorists. Because it's ridiculous to accuse Bible thumpers as being white supremacist, narrow-minded, homophobic bigots who have a war on women. That is totally ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Now, in my book, At the End of This Darkness, I explain the 13th Amendment was signed and the Emancipation Proclamation banned slavery in the U.S. Constitution. But on 92, in this book, I explain, despite this fact, human sex trafficking in the U.S. has hit record numbers. Slavery, while it may look different today, is unfortunately still alive and well in America. Each year, an estimated 14,000 to 17,000 foreign nationals are trafficked in the United States. The number of U.S. citizens trafficked within the country each year is even higher, with an estimated 200,000 American children at risk for trafficking in the sex industry. And this statistic does not include the 2 million illegal aliens allowed entrance in 2021 by the Biden administration and the thousands of innocent children who are being trafficked right now today in the human trafficking industry. So slavery is still here, unfortunately, but it's not the Christians that are doing it. This woman makes the merchants of the earth rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Almost every nation in the world trades with the U.S. She has a world currency. Wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. And the woman which thou sawest is that great population center which reigneth over the kings of the earth. The word reigneth is not to be confused with an actual kingdom, but rather the right or authority to rule over a kingdom. The U.S. rules the world with her currency. That's how we rule. Since World War II, the U.S. dollar has been the world currency around the world. But how did she get such great wealth? How did the U.S. get such great wealth? 
It's because she's a covenant nation. And a covenant with God initiated divine provision, guidance, and protection. Now, covenant is a binding agreement between two parties. A biblical covenant is a conditional promise made between God and man. On November 11, 1620, 102 pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock and officially, knowingly or unknowingly, made a covenant with God. And this is what they said. Having undertaken the glory of God and advancements of the Christian faith, and the honor of the king and country in the presence of God and one another, we covenant and combine ourselves together in a civil body politic. They claimed the land of America as a covenant with God. And when you have a covenant with God, you get covenant protection. You get covenant provision, you get covenant guidance, you get covenant protection. And you, and you, and you, and you can all have your own personal covenant with God. I found that out when I released 10% of my net worth and I came back into covenant with God, just like Cornelius did. Now, what happens when you form a covenant with God? If you observe and do all these commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God give thee, this is in uh, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, these blessings shall come upon you in the city, in the field, the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of your cattle, the flocks, the sheep, the basket, the store. When thou comest in, you should be blessed coming in and blessed going out. Thine enemies that rise up against you shall be smitten by thy face, and they will flee from you seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse and in all that thou settest thine hand to do. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, the fruit of the cattle, the fruit of the ground, in the land which the Lord thy God has given thee. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left or to go after other gods to serve them. Folks, I trust that you've enjoyed part two of our live seminar presentation. Next week, we'll continue with that meeting right here in Bradenton, Florida, as we continue to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. This is Prophecy USA. My name is Rick Pearson reminding you that Jesus Christ is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people think. Shalom.